Right, so uh, it's World Mental Health Day today, so why do you think this is an important sort of day to have with mental health? Yeah, I think it just brings awareness, doesn't it? I think everyone goes by their everyday life and, you know, there's struggles that people go through, but I think it can bring... Um, bring a lot of attention around mental health and certainly it might you know encourage and invite people that are going through something to maybe step up today uh, and speak about their issues and mental health and maybe see it as an opportunity to do that mm -hmm. so if you don't mind, mind me asking what have been your sort of experiences with mental health yourself yeah so um Basically, I was 28 years old, I was at Lincoln City, um, and I had an anxiety attack uh, on holiday. Um, so, obviously, with the pressures of football and, you know, being around masculinity all the time, stepping into my masculine all the time, um, I never really had a filter. I never knew how to express myself other through sport. So, connecting the dots going backwards, you know, I used to hear big boys don't cry as a child, you know, there's no blueprint to parenting, but that's what society says and what my mum used to say and I repressed all my emotions for 28 years and you know using sport as a release for me was good temporary but long term it did catch up with me because I wasn't expressing myself through language and I wasn't allowed to really talk about uh, my feelings and emotions as a guy. So was it sport that triggered the attack or was it just expectations in general? Or? No I think it definitely caught with me in terms of the pressures of football obviously the fixture pile up I played over 50 games that season for Lincoln um, and obviously it was quite exhausting mentally and physically so I think I was quite vulnerable at the time but it wasn't until I connected the dots going backwards to my childhood to realise that my mum in some abusive relationships exposed to domestic violence at a young age um, was all these roots that I didn't actually pull out you know at any point in time in my life and obviously it took me to 28 when um, I always say feeling is the secret you know your body will tell you when something's happening and sort of what we're thinking uh, which is deep rooted and certainly when I had this pain across my chest and had an anxiety attack at 28 um, I realized that there's something sub subconsciously that is going on and maybe deep rooted in my life that I needed to go and revisit and did these con how long did these continue or do you still have them now um, no um, I don't still have them of course um, the stresses of life I mean in the last four weeks I've had the three main stresses I've had a newborn I've moved house and I've had a new job so all within four weeks of course uh, I'm only human there's things what come to the surface but I've got the tools now I've been on seminars workshops you know I've, I've spent a lot of money a lot of time and a lot of energy into re like getting to know myself going on a personal growth journey and that's brought me a long way and obviously I want to pay that forward now with my new business where I can give people the tools to navigate and maneuver way the way past issues so do you think, um, as a father, you'll, you'll tell your uh, child, sorry, is it a son or a daughter? Girls, I've got girls, girls. yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think you'll teach them about how important it is to express themselves mentally and be open? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I always see and I'm always like, no, just let the chi child cry. You know, sometimes you'll see a child laying on the floor in the middle of town and they're having a tantrum and, and they stop the process of like allowing that whole emotion to complete itself and I'm like that's the way you know maybe a child cannot speak yet that's the only form of language the child has to express themselves in the way they're feeling if they feel frustrated allow them to feel frustrated that's the only way they can filter it and get it out so a lot of the time we stop stop it at source and cut the process of like actually allowing the emotion to complete itself certainly I'll be encouraging my children or anybody listening to this to make sure that you be with the emotions but as long as you be with it see what it's come to teach allow it to complete itself and then move past it don't dwell in it for too long don't live there uh, and you know and then you can get past that issue so what advice do you have for people who are struggling with mental health problems at the moment yeah my, I always start with this you know speak to somebody about it um, there, there's help online there's courses to take there's books to read you know I don't think you can put a price on actually investing in yourself so whether there's a course whether there's books seminars workshops I don't think you can put a price on you know going and and investing time in yourself and in investing money in yourself because personal growth journey is what led me to overcome everything that I've been through and I've had to endure so I definitely encourage people to speak out and um, you know not repress your emotions you know and like I say go back to it you know I used to hear big boys don't cry you know big boys do cry 
and what is strong today you know what is strength and I believe that being vulnerable and being your true authentic self no matter what which is challenging in society is real strength so I just think be yourself and speak out about whatever you're feeling. You mentioned men there and, and boys do you think it's a problem with gender and how mental health is expressed? I think there's been this whole notion and perception around men and how like I say big boys don't cry and I'm sure there's other uh, words that guys are as a child and sort of you know being the breadwinner going out and providing I'm in a, I'm fortunate that I'm in a conscious relationship where there's no gender role you know so we remove that straight away that relieves the pressure of me you know my fiance allows me to um, go and do what I love to do without the pressures of providing um, and, I, and I believe this whole notion around guys have to go out and provide and run around with their head chopped off these pressures that catch up with people you know real freedom in life is to go and do what you love to do and express yourself in that way and I think we live in a world where it's fast-paced I think there's uh, we live in a text tweet twerk world I like to call it where most it's like uh, live die most toys at the end wins and we're all competing and comparing living on this hamster wheel of life trying to get ahead and trying to be successful uh, I think one thing I'm fortunate of is being a footballer I've played in front of 60,000 at the Emirates against Arsenal um, and, and happiness wasn't at the end of success mm. and we always chase something outside of ourselves thinking success is going to bring us sustainable happiness certainly that wasn't the case for me um, happiness is an experience that we tap into every day it's a daily practice um, so it's not hidden behind the car the house the money because I've had all that and you know and I got to the top of the mountain in life and I was like mm, there's still something there what's quite empty inside so you know I, I believe that uh, it's really important to get to know yourself and uh, and understand your own journey. So what did it take to sort of solve that issue that you had? Because it wasn't money or, or fame or anything like that that actually yeah. solved it in the end, was it? Um, well, self-generated. Um, I went out to Nepal when uh, I lost my mum in 2015. Off the back of that, I wanted to go and travel and I'll give myself permission to do what I wanted to do. For the first time in my life, I was in this bubble, this world of football for 14 years as a professional so I took myself off to Nepal where I went traveling and I was in this village called Shantinagar and there was children there where there was glass and rubble everywhere and they had no trainers but the happiest people I've ever met in my life and I was thinking what is inside of these these people these guys that are so happy but they've got nothing so I realized that happiness is something that we can create on a daily basis in ourselves with our rituals with our routines winning the morning winning the day by our changing our mindset um, you know so all of this is an inward journey something that you've got to discover inside yourself I call it self-discovery where we're looking out there for the answers and all the answers lie inside mm -hmm. so now you do sort of lectures and seminars on you know self betterment or, or self yeah so my business is Nathan Arnold coaching um, so it's not football uh, a lot of people think it is related to football but I went through a lot. I went through a secret storm at the most successful time in my career, which allowed me to then go and, and give service to others. So I spoke to over 10,000 people in the last 12 months. I've gone and done assemblies in schools. Now I'm, I'm taking it into businesses, into sports teams, developing a champion's mindset, but also how to build resilience. I think it's a soft generation in terms of um, there's a lot of labels out there. I think I think I encourage people to be more resilient and sort of look at everything that you've overcome and it could be like you know some trauma or something that you've been through or been exposed to at a young age mine was uh, domestic violence so you know i give people the tools and the methods to sort of uh, understand their journey and then use the tools to sort of overcome that and one of the tools that i had was i had a shoe box and if if i'd seen somebody lay their hands on my mother or um, if you know the electricity used to cut off and the candles came on or whatever it would be what was really challenging I'd write it down and I'd put it in a shoebox put it under my bed and I'd always use that as my driving force I'd always open it and that was my motivation to say wow look what I've overcome look how far I've come and look what I went through so it's about giving people the tools through my business how they can sort of develop that mindset to change their life around and you mentioned your mother quite a lot sounds like she was quite nailed an important person in your life do you think she would be proud by what you're doing now I think so um, you know I, I believe that life happens for us not to us you know I think when people say why does this have to happen to me when they go through losing somebody close to them um, I think you fall into victim consciousness I think that things happen in life 
for a reason and certainly that was my greatest lesson you know losing my mother who I was the only male in the family there was me my mum my nan and my sister my father was absent so for me I, obviously I was very close to my mother growing up but what she taught me in this in the final stages of her life was to live my life very intentional and deliberate and you know I and there's nothing no course or anything that could have taught me that it was literally uh, being in that ex having that experience and being in that moment which allowed me to go and do what I do. So I'm very grateful and thankful that my biggest breakdown was my biggest breakthrough in life. Awesome. Um, so <laughs> with footballers, um, Danny Rose, you know, uh, Aaron Lennon and, yeah. and Clark Carlisle, they've all come forward with mental health issues. Do you think it's a problem with football and the fame? Uh, and that, is that why it's, it's becoming more common for footballers to talk about this sort of stuff? Um, I think it's very difficult. I mean, um, you're put on a pedestal first and foremost, so you always you almost have to wear a mask. You know, I came out on BBC Radio Lincolnshire when I was going through my uh, go-throughs and sort of revealed the man behind the curtain. You know, I'd go home and I'd be suffering with anxiety and depression. Uh, it wasn't very, it wasn't easy. It was very difficult to then. Um, try and break it down to people exactly what I'm going through because I was highly successful on the pitch so these guys who's got a bigger status you know these guys like Danny Rose coming out it certainly encouraged people and you know I tried to change the perception of footballers when I was at Lincoln City you know uh, the lads would be playing cards and poker at the back and gambling and I'd be at the front reading a book and sort of going on this personal development journey and I thought you know I want to be my true authentic self in an environment where it's really pressurized to be someone you're not and um, you know I wanted to pave the way and change the perception of what football look, what looks like and you know and certainly once I paved the way and went forward and said right this is what I'm dealing with and I give myself permission to be me it encouraged other people to do the same and I had two other team members at the time teammates at Lincoln that actually pulled me aside and said this is what I'm going through too so people like Danny Rose and people who's got um, you know, a high profile uh, would certainly be able to pave the way for others, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sort of moving into football, um, you left, um, it was Alshing, Alshing, Alshingham. Alshingham. Yeah, Alshingham, yeah, you left them in August. Yeah. Do you have any other plans to return to football? Uh, yeah, so currently I'm managing. I'm a manager at Melton Town, um, which is step six level. Um, again, helping my friend out, but fully enjoying it. Uh, I want to learn the ropes. I want to earn my stripes and do it the right way. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm 32 and manager, so I'm quite a young manager. But um, you know, where it's going to leave me in four or five years' time is going to be valuable for that experience that I'm going to gain right now. Because you know, I still get my football fixed, and even though I come away from playing it, I still want to have that input and pour into other people, and I get to do that as manager. And obviously talking about managers, Lincoln City, they've changed um, Danny Cowley and Nicky Cowley left for yeah. Michael Appleton. What are your thoughts on, on sort of the, the Cowley's legacy? Yeah, I think um, it was inevitable that they was going to move on. Um, you know, I, I love the way, they, the, I love their story, how they've sort of come up through non-league and now they're applying their trade in the championship as managers. They've been very patient. Uh, they've had a vision for such a long time and to see that come to fruition and live out their dream it's amazing to see they're incredible people they've left a, a legacy at Lincoln you know the the what they've done for that football club and for the city has been uh, legendary really and um, you know whoever stepped in obviously Michael Apperton has whoever was going to step in after those is going to get uh, a real good opportunity a bite at it to continue that success because he left him in such a good place and your thoughts on the appointment of Appleton? Yeah, so um, I'm not too sure about his background really. I know he was at Portsmouth and uh, I know he's assistant manager. Um, I've not read too much about Michael Appleton and that's not to obviously disrespect him in any way because I'm sure he's got a fantastic pedigree and I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job at Lincoln. So I can't really touch on too much about you know who was in for the running and like and talk about Michael Appleton as such because I've never met him but you know I have um, looked at on YouTube I've looked at his interview looked at his pre co press conference he looks very articulate he looks like he's a people person you know and he's certainly settled in brilliantly and they got a real really good result against Sunderland and um, you know that result was a reflection of obviously the good work he's already done so far in this sh such a sh um, short space of time so you know I'm wishing him well whoever steps in the hot seat at Lincoln City I want him to do well so it's, it's no different with Michael Appleton.
Okay. Uh, and do you think I'll go back to mental health just just as a final question? Do you think yeah. football was a bit of an escape when you were suffering, or was it sort of a cause? It's difficult because it's a blessing and a curse because it's both. It's you're um, escaping the worldly responsibilities and world problems because for an hour and a half while you're playing football, everything disappears. But then of course you pop back out and you go into the real world again and then you've got all your problems to pick up. But also football was a release as well. So it's very difficult, I'd say both because you know, as human beings, we either running away from something or moving towards something. And I was certainly uh, running towards a purpose, which was football, which brought me joy and happiness. Uh, but also I was moving away from who I truly was as a, because on a spiritual level we are three part beings mind body and soul we do have a soul and a lot of the time we only operate from our mind and body so like obviously physically and mentally I was prepared and well equipped and I had a, a warrior like mentality but yet my spiritual path and sort of who I was as a person at the core of my being wasn't being attended to so um, it's a blessing and a curse being fo playing football and this is why it's important that even the most successful people you look at Robin Williams and you look at all the people that have come out uh, with depression and um, what they've been dealing with like these guys have got everything in terms of what we perceive to be everything you know and I always go back to it as long as we've got breath and long as we are grateful for the things that we do have then we have everything it's not about the money the car the name on the door uh, and that what we chase and this perception around it and I think that creates problems within itself because there's this high expectation of what success looks like and um, you know I always have to say to people and I think Jim Carrey come out and said I wish everybody could be famous for one day to realize that's not the answer and until you've actually lived it um, you still go chasing and think that you know it's happiness is there and um, you know maybe for some people that was the case certainly for me in my journey that wasn't uh, that wasn't to be and you know I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life now um, having come away from football and that's no uh, nothing to do with football um, but I think where I'm at in my life and certain giving myself freedom and giving myself permission to live life on my terms certainly uh, has led to my happiness currently.